So he is referring <clears throat> to his passion that he is waiting to accomplish. Remember, this is one of the main reasons why he came, or the reason why he came, to suffer and die for us <clears throat> so that we could be saved. And then he says, do you think I have come to establish peace on the earth? No. So he says he has not come to establish peace, but rather division. In another passage, he'll say, I have come not to bring peace, but the sword, because the sword divides. And he's speaking here. Uh, uh, also, uh, the way that he says this about the division coming, uh, another aspect of fire is sometimes that's a reference to war uh, in the Old Testament. Uh, fire is, <clears throat> is often a reference to war, which of course brings division. So he's bringing uh, war in a sense, not physical war, but he's, being, he's bringing a war within ourselves. Uh, there is always a war, a battle going on in our souls. Satan wants us, and our sinful nature pulls in that direction. But God wants us, and we, our better nature uh, goes in that direction, towards God. And so when he speaks about this division, <clears throat> he's speaking about the natural consequence that comes when you follow him. When we follow him and choose to follow him, that even our family will reject us. Even our closest friends will reject us if we choose to follow Christ. <clears throat> because what he asks of us to do causes division. It's not an easy thing to do. Nobody feels threatened by a Buddhist, for example. They don't really demand much of anything. Uh, a, a Buddhist is more of a self-interested religion or philosophy. Uh, but, and because of that, there is really no threat to other people. Uh, it doesn't make you think that you have to change your life. Uh, because uh, Buddhism is very centered on self-enlightenment. Yes, we are focused on salvation for ourselves. But our salvation depends also upon whether or not we're, help, we're willing to help other people to reach salvation. Buddhism does not rely on that. Uh, I'm not going to go through every religion, but that's just to give an example of uh, why uh, things like that are not a threat to many people. Because they don't make demands. Buddhism doesn't make demands on other people. Christianity does. Because Christianity is completely centered in the truth. And the truth always brings division. Because the truth forces people to make a decision. Whether they're going to follow what is true, or whether they're going to follow what is false. <clears throat> and so for us, this is what's going to cause division to be a Catholic Christian. Jeremiah in the Old Testament reading <clears throat> from the book of Jeremiah, from the prophet of Jeremiah, uh, he is mistreated <clears throat> because he says the things that cause division. He says things that God tells him to say, and these things cause division. I mean, people even say, <clears throat> Jeremiah should be put to death because he is demoralizing the soldiers <clears throat> and all the people by speaking such things to them. Uh, thus, uh, Jeremiah is uncomfortable, or he makes them uncomfortable. He's an uncomfortable presence because God is using him to chastise the people, uh, to warn them, to call them back to himself. Out of God's love, he's calling his people back to himself through Jeremiah. And so Jeremiah is thrown <clears throat> into the cistern where there's only mud, and Jeremiah sank into the mud, we hear, uh, physically, but also probably the way he felt, that he felt as if he was being consumed by the mud, is a very physical way to represent how he felt at that moment. 
But eventually he is taken out. He is uh, preserved by the Lord, by inspiring others to remove him. <clears throat> so Jesus brings division. He brings division when we uh, choose to tell a family member that if they're visiting and they're from out of town, that we, we tell them we're going to go to church and they can come if they want. But if they don't come, they're going to, you're, we're going to go to church anyway. Um, that may cause division. Uh, they may feel uncomfortable. They may not like the fact that you're going to church. Um, you have no reason to feel bad. Um, they can survive on their own uh, for an hour and a half or however long it takes for you to get here and back and be at Mass. It's going to cause division in your family if you choose not to go to a wedding because somebody is Catholic in your family and they're choosing not to get married in the church. Uh, anybody who chooses not to get married in the church and is a Catholic is automatically not getting married. It is an invalid marriage, automatically, because they're bound by the form of marriage. Uh, it should go without saying that obviously if there's somebody in your family that's marrying somebody or attempting to marry somebody of the same sex and you don't go to that, you are obviously going to be considered a bigot and full of hate. But the problem is, people will often be angry because we make a stand about something we believe. And we're not forcing them to believe what we believe. But often they want to force us to believe what they believe. So they want us to approve of something they're doing that we don't agree is right. By making us feel guilty about not going to their wedding, for example. And hopefully, if you're close enough with the person, hopefully you're willing to tell them why you're not going. If you're not very close, you don't really have to explain why you're not going to their wedding or their attempt of getting of marriage. <clears throat> but we have the responsibility to stand firm, even if it causes division. Because there are things that we cannot compromise. There are things that we cannot, no matter what the circumstance is, there are things that we cannot do otherwise because we only have one option. <clears throat> there are other circumstances that may not be as obvious. They may be a little more difficult for us to know what to do. And that's when we can ask for advice uh, from other trusted Catholics, uh, from looking at the church's teachings, asking a priest. But we are called to accept that there will be division if we're going to follow Christ. And that's okay, because people rejected Jesus. Not everyone accepted Jesus, so we don't need to expect that everyone will accept us uh, when we stand firm in our beliefs, when we stand firm in what we know is true, and what we are taught uh, through the magisterium that is the official teaching of the church is true. Jesus said himself, I have not come to establish peace on the earth, but rather division. If he came to establish peace on the earth, that is a lack of conflict, then he would automatically be saying that he was not concerned whether people followed what was true. He wouldn't die on a cross unless he was doing it for the truth. Uh, Jesus was not making compromises when he ascended the cross. Uh, there was no compromise in him. Uh, he was completely set, his face like flint, as we hear prophesied in the Old Testament, setting the course to the cross so that he would be baptized with the baptism with which he must be baptized, suffering and dying, so that he could rise again, so that we too could be willing to suffer the persecution that we receive from those who reject our faith and be willing to stand firm. Even if all abandon us, we still stand firm with our Lord who was abandoned by almost everyone. And so we don't look at this as something dreary, but rather as something joyful. 
something joyful that he himself approached the cross and ascended the cross because he knew about the victory that would happen. He knew about the victory of the resurrection, his ascension, and his reigning in heaven and the sending of the Holy Spirit so that we too could, yes, go through suffering like he did, but so that we too could receive salvation through the sacraments and come into the presence with him, his Father, and the Holy Spirit in heaven, where there will be no pain, no suffering, no even, uh, no even tiniest, not even the tiniest indicator towards something unpleasant. Everything in heaven is beyond what we can imagine what happiness is.